Hello, welcome to Mr. Tim Check's carpentry class. Today we're going to be learning about how to raise walls and how to raise them safely. First thing we have to ensure is that we have our floor framing all correct. Uh, we have everything down. We have our block in between our joists. Um, we want to make sure we have this so our on-center spacing is true throughout the framing so we can set our walls correctly we know what's underneath it so we can attach it to our joist um, so we have you know our rim joist on the outside and then uh, we have our all our floor joists in the middle and then our blocking in between and then we have to make sure that our subfloor is on before we start raising our walls we have to make sure that they're everything staggered um, there should be no uh, two butt joints in line. There should be a butt joint over here, a butt joint over here, um, nice and staggered. And then we nail it off with eight penny nails. And um, if you want to go an extra mile, it should be glued down first. So you put uh, some uh, construction adhesive down on the framing first, and then you put your uh, then you nail it off or screw it off. So what you want is a good connection, uh, both overlapping sheets of subfloor should be shared equally on the joist uh, so three quarter inches on one side three quarter inches on the other one that would be bad was this one where it takes up the entire joist leaving no room for the next uh, subfloor to join it as well what you could do if this did happen was there's two options cut this all right trim this to three quarter all right, so it doesn't overlap so much on that joist, or you could just nail on a two by material so you would uh, you have something to rest on for that next uh, subfloor. Um, so before you raise your walls, you want to snap your chalk lines. Use the three four method on your subfloor, making sure all your chalk lines and everything lines up and everything's kind of mapped out where these walls should be. So when you have them and you raise them you know exactly where this uh, wall should be, not guessing. Alright, there's Larry. He's kind of laying out his plates. Instead of snapping lines, I mean obviously I think he snapped lines, but kind of an old school method is to literally put all your plates down first and then start ra raising your walls. I don't really like that because you have all this material just all over the place. Uh, the chip over and it's kind of hard to frame your walls but that's definitely one way to do it and ensure that everything's going to be square and fit properly um, where your walls are supposed to be um, obviously you know with your when you're building your walls you want to lay out you know your plates first um, you want to kind of frame up your longest exterior load bearing wall first uh, make sure that your bottom plates are going to be square uh, and not twisted and bowed you want to make sure they're by the best stock that you can for your uh, top and bottom plates it'll, it'll make the process of installing these walls a lot easier after um, you mark them out together and obviously you start framing them just a review always frame the door or window opening first and then you frame around it that's just a practical thing because it's so much easier to uh, install uh, frame and install the opening inside the wall first and then instead of having all your studs in the way making it really hard to frame up your um, openings so that's just a practical thing and also framing it flat on the deck is what you want um, you know we should know this by now you know get our header together nail a jacks to the kings you know sills install our sills and stuff like that um, so we know how to make our openings but squaring our walls is something that we got to do before we actually raise them so when you have a flat on the deck everything's framed up now we have to square it the first thing you want to check is your di uh, diagonals so when you check your diagonals you're looking for equal distance from one diagonal to the next so from this corner to this corner and then from this corner to this corner should be equal if they are not equal we then have to move to uh, other methods to square this up and so if by some chance it is ready to go then it's uh you can put some bracing on and you're good to go but usually it's not it's a little bit racked this is called it being racked 
uh, one way is longer than the other, so now we have to square it up. Uh, what you have to do is you have to lay it flat on the deck, and then you have to kind of nail uh, one corner of it. Uh, we'll move back to this one. Uh, square up one corner. So do the three, four, five method, or depending on how big your wall is, you can go six, eight, ten. All right, probably six, eight, ten is more common. Square up one of the walls, one of the corners. So if we just pick this corner, square this up by hitting this. Looks like this side's got to get hit over this way, and then you put a temporary brace on. Then you check your dimen diagonals, and then you can kind of adjust from there. So get one corner squared, and then you can just work your way around. Or you could just really what happens is you get one corner square and then um, you can kind of do the entire thing. Uh, you get the one corner square, get the temporary brace on, and then toenail either side to the um, subfloor. And then you can kind of hit it and adjust it. It's kind of a thing that's hard to explain, um, but uh, once you get practice doing it, it's not so it's not so bad uh, the bracing that you use once you got everything squared is um, going from one uh, side of the wall to the other so like the bottom to the side wall you're gonna want to put a brace making kind of like this triangle effect and you want this corner to be perfectly square um, braces make uh, keep the wall square while you're raising them and it keeps it nice and sturdy and, and stiffens the wall up. Um, there's two really ways of bracing. One is a lead brace, which is notched out. Usually it's used a used one by material, uh, like a you know, which is three quarter inches uh, wide. And you lay it across and you cut notches between all these studs in the bottom and this uh, end stud, and you lock it all in. And you usually use eight penny nails. And it looks like this. So you notch out the actual stud itself in the top and bottom, uh, top and bottom plates, and then you nail it off, and then it makes your ball really rigid. So another way to do it is actually cut blocking in between the studs. Uh, this might be something that you do if you want to do a bunch of notching. It is harder to do because you have to get those cuts just right, um, and installing it, it's not so easy at times because you have to do all this uh, kind of toenailing. This is a lead brace over here. There's Larry installing his lead braces. He kind of uses a very dangerous method of putting, turning a circular saw on the side to cut it. But if you just kind of make a bunch of score cuts, notch it out, it doesn't take that long. Um, kind of the more modern way of doing it is putting on your sheathing. After you square up your wall, you put on your sheathing, and that keeps your wall nice and square and rigid as you're raising your wall. So what these guys are doing, their wall is squared, and then you just nail off your OSB or plywood sheathing, and that keeps it uh, from going out of square as you're raising it, and you're kind of good to go. Uh, a couple things about the pros and cons of doing either letting braces or bracing with everything with sheathing um, the letting braces um, are pretty quick and efficient it really does lock it in um, and it makes the wall lighter since the OSB or plywood sheathing is not already on the wall so when you raise it it's not so heavy um, kind of the cons is that you got to have fine one by material hopefully it's somewhere on the wet job site but it's not always on there um, and then probably the biggest con is that you need to sheath the house after the walls are already stood. So if it's something like this, now you have to haul all this sheathing all the way up. So that's un kind of unfortunate. Or even here, this guy, he's trying to, he put his walls up with no sheathing. And now he's trying to, uh, put this, these four by eight sheets on the wall while they're standing. Not always an easy task to do. Um, putting the sheathing on before you raise the wall is probably more popular just because you don't have to climb uh, and carry all these sheets up onto the walls vertically but it does make it a lot heavier when you're picking the wall up so but there's a lot of different um, things that you can do to help uh, install this uh, raise the wall when it's heavy so just a couple ways to um, 
connect your different walls together. Obviously, if you have a 40 foot, 60 foot wall, there's no bottom or top plates. You're gonna, they're gonna 60 foot long. Like there's no two by six by 40 that you can just all do it on one plate. It's gonna be multiple walls put together to form one giant wall. So what you have to do is uh, connect your walls. There's two ways of doing it. You can connect it with one stud and nail it on on either. Uh, yeah, you know, so you'd be three quarter inches, three, three, three quarter inches there. You could nail it on on one time there. Um, not always recommended. Uh, I don't really like that method because it's not a lot of bite and not a lot of support between that wall. What I like to do is put an end stud on one wall, end stud on the other wall, and then connect, and then just nail these off together. I kind of prefer that, but um, I've seen it both ways. So this is what, like you have a, and this is these are two separate walls. One wall here, one wall here. You connect it right here, and then the double top plate needs to overlap both walls by at least four feet and kind of lock those walls in. Now when you're actually raising the wall, it's important to have enough help to support this wall. Uh, don't try to do uh, any kind of Herculean effort, but before you even raise it, make sure that everybody is on the same game plan, everybody knows what's going on. And that everybody has their specific job and ready for their specific job. Someone has to have the level. Someone has to have the nails. Who's nailing off? Who has a level? Um, you know, just who, who's kind of orchestrating it all. Everybody has a job and everybody knows exactly what they're doing. So, uh, you know, it's good to have a nice crew to raise it up. They could probably use an extra guy. That was a pretty heavy wall. They could probably use someone extra as well. But you can see here. Um, one way what you could do is that you toenail this to the ground and, and to the bottom plate so it kind of acts as a hinge. But what I like to do is use um, these side braces and uh, I don't know if there's a picture here but you nail on these 2x4s on the edge here so the wall doesn't fall off your deck. There's wall jacks here if you don't have a giant crew. Um, what it does is kind of jack up the wall for you. All it takes is a 2 by and you just kind of nail it on there, slide it on, and you kind of jack up the wall, kind of like jacking up a car. And you can really do it, uh, raise, you can really raise your wall by yourself by using these wall jacks. You especially need large wall jacks if you're doing some kind of large uh, wall, like this big uh, rake wall at the top of a house. All right, so you have your wall frame, but if you plus have your roof system on top of this end gable um i think super heavy no amount of people could really raise something this tall uh, say you have jacks that's a pretty that's a pretty big wall i don't know if i would have framed it quite like that but uh you know you definitely need some heavy duty jacks to lift up that wall and then where you nail it off at you definitely want to nail it into the joist you just so wherever their stud is it should be right above the joist so you just tow if you just nail it right by the stud it should be hitting a joist um, you can definitely tell when you're nailing all right if you hit a joist or not because you felt like you actually nailed into something when you nail into like 16 penny nails into just the subfloor uh, it kind of has a loose feeling and you, you kind of know that you didn't hit nothing underneath you want to make sure that your plates are definitely in the floor framing and all attached when you're raising the wall all right, someone's got to, you nail it down at the bottom and then you, someone just attack it on and then you, someone has to nail in some blocking on the subfloor and then you put a uh, angled brace there on the wall and then you're checking for plumb and when it's good, uh, you nail it off to this block. So it's all, this temporary, this temporary brace is nailed off to the wall and then once it's plumb, it's nailed off to this block. And so it, when you're raising these walls, you end up all this bracing and it's kind of all over the place but it's keeping everything together and keeping everything square and plump. On the double top plates you have to lock them in with these nails with nails on the double top plate and that's what uh, locks in all your four corners. And there it is right there. Everything's locked in. Alright this is Raising Walls with Mr. Tim Check.